Here he is, Mr. Robson Green. Ah, oh Lord. I must take you back home, didn't it? Yeah. Robson, well, good Lord, you're a good looking man. Thanks. <laughs> Those piercing eyes, I feel as if they can look into my very soul. You need to get out more, John. Yeah. <laughs> look how blue they are, look at that. <laughs> and they nearly match. <laughs> Uh, Robson, it's so nice to, to... Well, thank you for coming on the show. You're welcome. It's an honour. Near privilege. Oh. Where have you been? You've been away for ages, it seems like. Uh, I've just actually come back from uh, the States. I've been doing... I take, took a break so I could spend some time with my son and... Um, I did the Disney World thing so my wife, Vanya, could have a rest and, you know, um, made the mistake of not realising that Mickey Mouse to a two-and-a-half-year-old is a six-foot rat. <laughs> hey, here's Mickey Mouse Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you're out there, I mean, this was a holiday. I know you've been out there before, presumably for business. Have you ever been offered movies? I mean, is that somewhere that you're keen to work? Well, I mean, you know, I, I'd signed uh, what they call uh, a, a golden handcuffs with ITV, and um, that meant, you know, I only could do ITV work and wasn't allowed. Uh, I went out there last year and was offered a movie by Billy Friedkin, you know, director of French Connection and The Exorcist. Yeah. And, uh, Unfortunately, uh, because of the deal I'd done with ITV, I wasn't able to do it. But so there's, how, there's, there's so how delighted were you with that deal at that stage then? You must have been so filled with your relationship with ITV for... Well, for you know, I mean, you know, in, in the end, I think... You know, I'm a lad from Newcastle, and when somebody offers you a squillion quid, I mean, money does corrupt the mind. But, Robson, because you know Tom Selleck, he was the first choice of um, uh, the, the guys who made the Indiana Jones movies. Yeah. Okay? He couldn't do it because he was signed up to do Magnum P.I. Oh, my God. <laughs> Pierce Brosnan was going to be Bond years and years ago. He was tied up with a contract yeah, with yeah, Remington yeah, Steel. Remington Steel yeah, yeah. You could you could have been, like, I don't know, E.T. or something if you hadn't have had that deal. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I was reaching. I didn't have a, an idea in mind. But the thing is, um, with the, the Brit thing, I mean, a lot when you, when you're out there, you see a lot of the Brits are, are baddies. Yeah. You know, and in and all the movies you're offered, it, it's, all, it's all baddie parts, and that's not really my bag, you know. Yeah. I mean, do, doing horrendous things in, in a lot of the movies. Well, you'd be a leading man type, I think, because I know you got the following with the, the ladies and some of the gentlemen as well. I'm sure. Thanks very much. And the older ladies love you. Yeah, they do. There was a lady uh, recently went, "E, look who it is, and I haven't got me teeth in." <laughs> Which I would she, have thought, she also said... But that uh, would be a bonus, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> fillings, 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 yeah, fillings. Yeah, but she also said, I've got your CD. I got it free with a chicken in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> but she now uses it to keep her fridge steady. Now, this is the stuff you used to do with the guy with the big chin. Um, it was Robson He's and Jerome. He's a friend. He's a friend. I have a clip of you singing on Top of the Pops. Oh, look. Okay. No, come on. Because this was, it was the biggest singer that year. This is, this is uh, well, it's Robson and Jerome in action. And time goes by so slowly And time can do so much I still, still my Songs, didn't you? Well, you know, unapologetically, I, I, I don't worry about talking about it. I think in four months we, we netted 1.6 each, yeah, million. Sweet baby Moses! <laughs> yeah. Wow. But I paid 40% tax on that, so it's not good. <laughs> Even so, man, that's a good Christmas, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But, you know, as I said, I made the record company, I mean, the guy who was in control of it, Simon Cowell, you know, what No, was it Simon Cowell? It was, yeah. Satan. <laughs> Yeah. You made money for Beazel Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been watching Pop Idol? What do you think of that show? Um, I think, and I'm not meaning to sound paralyzing, the, the, the young guys and girls are really talented. But what, the one thing that they don't do 
is actually surround them with helpful advice, like, you know, get yourself a decent lawyer. When I embarked on the music, yeah. I had a great lawyer, John Kennedy, and we did a great deal. Because, yeah. you know, what people don't realize is you're paying for everything. Yeah. You know, you're paying for the recording fees and, and the transport and the accommodation. But what they feed on is this unlimited uh, abundance of people wanting to be famous. Yeah. And, you know, they sign the dotted line before they even, you know, the, the, the penny drops when they actually realise, I hope they make a lot of money. Yeah. I hope, because they deserve to, because they're incredibly talented. And we they... like Gareth in my house best. Yeah. <laughs> Why? We, we have to. Do you? <laughs> my daughter has his posters all over the walls. If I had my way, I'd f strangle him. But... <laughs> <laughs> you know? But I'll say it again, I love Gareth. He's, yeah. he's marvellous. <laughs> uh, where's Jerome now? What's he doing right now? Because last time I saw him on TV, he was Badger the Pet Detective. <laughs> Which I kind of like in friend. a weird way. No, no, I, I like Badger the Pet Detective. <laughs> I wanted some of those pets investigated. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's, uh, when I spoke to him last, he's uh, rehearsing, he's doing a biopic of uh, Tommy Cooper's life in the West End. Wow. To be seen next year, and he'll do it really well, and I think he'll play it in a way that you'll care about the character and not just play the cliché. You know? Did he audition, or did he get it just like that? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? That was a, it was a mistake. That was Bravo. a mistake. Bravo. I apologise. Um, let's talk about the new thing you've got over on ITV, and sure. then we'll talk about the new thing you have coming up here on the BBC. So sure, sure, sure. ITV, a new series called Wire in the Blood, is yeah. that why? Yeah, it is. It's an adaptation of a uh, wonderful thriller writer, Val McDermott, who... Uh, we, we adapted three of her books and the first series, uh, it's a six-parter and it deals with human behaviour and I think we put forward, you know, in this notion of entertainment, I think we put forward maybe the solution that um, if we catch destructive behaviour at an early stage, then maybe we can stop the corrosion. Let's have a look at a clip. This is from Wire in the Blood. It starts on ITV pretty soon, I guess. Next Thursday. Yeah. OK, let's have a look. You look like Crack has been on the Slim Fast. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you've got a new show on the BBC next year as well. A new show uh, created by Simon Block called Trust. Which because uh, I spoke to the controller of the BBC and she said they, they think it's one of the best things you've done. Uh, much better than anything on ITV. <laughs> <laughs> now, she may be biased. I don't know. That's not for me to say. Yeah. But um, it sounds good. I, I mean, you know, of late, I mean, I took a break deliberately because of, you know, the scripts that were being offered and this... this uh, stage of work with Wire and, and Trust. I, I do believe, you know, I've nearly hit 300 hours of drama. Wow. And um, I think it is probably the best 12 hours I've ever done. Yeah. I, I, I am yeah. looking forward to seeing it. Will you stick around? I want you to meet our music guest tonight. Yeah, can't but wait. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robson Green. <laughs> Robson, thank you so much. Thank you.